Hi students, I am Priyanka Jain and I am a verified educator at the Unacademy Plus platform. You can watch several of my plus classes. Okay, I have soon started a catalyst batch course for the whole inorganic chemistry. You will see all the inorganic chemistry in this course and this is for the upcoming June 2022 exam of the CSIR net as well as for the GET exam, okay? So if you want to see different of the my lectures, different courses, you can see on the Unacademy. Take the subscription of the Unacademy. And if you want to see the free classes, there are also several free classes. Every month I take several free classes. You can watch these free classes without taking subscription. So for this, you will have to uncode my code. My code is Priyanka Jain 10. By clicking on this code, you will get the link for my classes. Thank you. Hi students, welcome in chemistry classes. I am Priyanka Jain and you are watching the videos of the chemistry of P block elements. Okay, so in this lecture, we will study about the interhalogen compounds. What are the interhalogen compounds? Actually, the halogens, halogens have a tendency that they can react with each other. Okay, halogens have a tendency to react with each other. What is meaning of each other means suppose we have given one of the halogen X okay, and another one is given to us A. Then they can react in this manner. They can form XA like ClF. They can form ClF. They can form BRF. Such type of compounds are known as the interhalogen compounds. It means the compounds that are formed between the halogens, two halogens. Okay. So, such type of compounds are known as the interhalogen compounds. Actually, these interhalogen compounds are more reactive. These are more reactive than the halogens. Okay. These are more reactive than halogens. Why? Because in this, the bond that is AX bond, this AX bond is weaker as compared to XX bond. Okay, so these compounds are highly reactive and there are different categories of interhalogen compounds. Actually, interhalogen compounds can be divided into four different categories. One type of compounds are AX. Okay, another type of compounds may be of type AX3. The third type of compounds may be of type AX5 and another type. The fourth type is AX7. Okay. So, see here what is the example of this type of compound. Suppose we are seeing AX type of compounds. These compounds are linear. Okay. These are linear. The example of such type of compounds are CLF, BRF, okay, and IF. IF is actually unstable. Okay. Another may be BRCL. Next may be ICL and another one may be IPR. These whole are the examples of linear type of AX compounds. The another type of series is AX3 series. AX3 means these are T-shaped compounds. Okay. So, the examples will be CLF3, BRF3, IF3. Actually, it is unstable. then ICL3. Okay. Next type of the compounds are AX5. AX5 will have the square pyramidal shape. Okay. These are square pyramidal. The example of this type is ClF5. Actually, it is unstable. Next is BRF5 and third one is IF5. Okay. Another type is AX7. Such type of compounds are pentagonal bipyramidal. The only one example of AX7 type of compounds is IF7. Okay. Okay. Now there is one question. Why only IF7 is formed in the series AX7? Why it is formed? or other will not form this type of compounds. You have not seen ClF7, you have not seen BRF7, okay. Only IF7 can exist. Actually, the reason behind is this, iodine is very large in size, okay. Iodine is a larger atom, okay. And second important thing is that it can exist in plus 7 oxidation state, okay. 
it can exist in plus 7 oxidation state and another important thing is that this f minus f minus is highly electronegative so this can accommodate this highly oxidizing iodine okay this iodine in high oxidation state can only be accommodated by this fluorine that is highly electronegative and second thing is that this fluorine is very smaller in size okay so this iodine that is very large in size this can accommodate the seven fluorines around it okay if you are taking a smaller atom okay if you are taking a smaller atom that cannot accommodate the seven fluorines around it but iodine can exist iodine can accommodate okay so these are the two important reasons that's why the if7 exists but another no more ax7 type of compounds exist okay now we have to see the properties the first important property is the reactivity as i have told earlier that the interhalogen compounds are highly reactive than the halogens except the f2 f2 is actually highly reactive and it will have very weak bond dissociation energy so it is highly reactive but except f2 all other halogens are some more stable than the interhalogen compounds this is due to that the bonds the ax bonds are highly weaker as compared to the xx bonds okay this ax bond is weaker than xx bonds so these compounds are highly reactive and the reactivity order the order or reactivity is found in this form see here clf3 will be having highest reactivity than brf5 then if7 then clf then brf3 then if5 then brf then if3 and then comes if okay this is the order of reactivity second important thing is the hydrolysis hydrolysis is a very important character of the interhalogen compounds on hydrolysis it gives two things it gives a halide and it gives a oxohalide okay it is giving two compounds halide and oxohalide and one thing important that should be noted that this oxohalide this oxohalide is formed from the larger halogen actually the oxidation number of the larger halogen does not change during the hydrolysis see here some important example of the hydrolysis reactions see here icl when it is hydrolyzed what will it will form it will form halide from the smaller one and the larger one will form the oxy halide okay similarly if you are treating icl3 with 3h2o then it is forming 5hcl and hio3 and icl okay similarly see the next reaction brf5 when it is hydrolyzed it is forming 5hf plus hbro3 it means it is forming f minus ions and bro3 minus oxohalide okay similarly see the reaction if7 is when hydrolyzed it is forming io4 minus plus 7f minus okay similarly if you are treating clf5 with h2o it is forming 4hf plus fclo2 okay next important reaction if you are taking if5 and treating it with 3h2o then it is forming hio3 plus 5h okay so these are some of the important hydrolysis reactions of the interhalogen compounds next important reaction is the halogenation reaction interhalogen compounds are good halogenating agents these can be used as the halogenating agent actually these are highly reactive the halogen fluorides are highly reactive and they can act as strong fluorinating agent see here some of the examples of the fluorinating agents suppose we are treating clf with csf then what is happening it is forming cs plus clf2 minus 
okay halogen is being introduced to clf is when treated with asf5 it is forming cl2f plus asf6 minus similarly if you are treating 6 clf with 2 al it is forming 2 al f3 plus 3 cl2 okay similarly next reaction see here 6 clf plus u it is forming u f6 plus 3 cl2 okay next see here 6 clf plus s it is forming s f6 plus 3 cl2 okay similarly see here if you are treating clf3 clf3 4 clf3 is treated with 6 mgo okay the halogen is being introduced in the magnesium okay and it is forming 3 cl2 plus 3 o2 similarly if you are treating clf3 with 2 agcl then it is forming 2 agf2 plus cl2 plus 2 clf okay next reaction c here clf3 is when treated with bf3 then it is forming clf2 plus bf4 minus these are the adduct type of the compounds okay the adduct is being formed okay clf3 is when treated with spf5 these whole compounds are the fluoride acceptors and these are easily accepting the fluorides clf2 is formed and we are getting sbf6 minus okay similarly see here 2 clf is when treated with asf5 then it is forming cl2f plus asf6 minus okay similarly clf3 is treated with csf then it is forming cs ch2f plus clf4 minus okay similarly if you are treating clf3 plus asf5 then it is forming clf2 plus asf6 minus okay similarly if you are treating brf5 if you are taking brf5 and treating it with sio2 now the silica is converted to sif4 okay and you are getting 2 brf3 plus o2 okay similarly i f5 is treated with ki then it is giving k plus i f6 minus i f5 is when treated with csf then it is forming cs plus i f6 minus okay these are some of the reactions in which we are seeing that the halogen or the fluorine is being added to the compound so these are acting as the fluorinating agent or halogenating agent now the next important reaction is the self ionization reaction in liquid state many of the inter halogen compounds and appreciable electrical conductivity these can show electrical conductivity okay and this conductivity is actually due to their self ionization they are undergoing self ionization like this see here 2 icl it will undergo auto ionization like i plus plus icl2 minus 2 brf3 is forming brf2 plus and brf4 minus this reaction i have already told you in the solvent non aqueous solvent okay similarly 2 if5 when it undergoes the self ionization or auto ionization it is forming if4 plus plus if6 minus okay so this is the self ionization reaction due to which it these are showing the electrical conductivity okay so this is about the interhalogen compounds and their properties okay 
meet you in the next video with the structures of the interhalogen compounds if you want some more topics you can comment me thank you